Yeah, thank you, Shari. So I'll just read a little bit because like you said, it's uh, only some hundred odd pages and um, uh, being in this kind of a format, um, it may not even be very meaningful if I read uh, a lot because it may just not connect. But I'll just read a little bit from a, from a, a part of this sequence of events, uh, which is actually um, a stage where these main characters are going through a shift uh, or what could be a shift in their life's circumstances. <clears throat> At the station, as we waited for the train, uh, I'm sorry, before I continue, I have used words and uh, uh, you know terms here, which are from my Malatam, which is Malayalam. Um, I can explain what they mean. Uh, you know, not too many in this extract, but uh, I, I think in the book I've chosen not to. So hopefully that <laughs> doesn't become a hindrance. At the station, as we waited for the train, Amuma bought us cups of hot tea and snacks. She made me sit next to Amma on one of those shiny plastic chairs that look nice but stick to the skin and are not comfortable at all when you sit in them, while she took Aniyati with her to buy food. Amma is already doing much better. Amuma says that all the time now, and I want to believe her. That day, when Amma went missing, Amuma was so calm. She just stood there and said to us, Molamma tirchu She will come back to me. She must be somewhere around here. It's just her way. Avala varu. She'll be all right. We will find her and take her away. Won't we, girls? She'll be all right. Where can she go? Alle. But I have never felt terror like I did that day. This was Amma, who hardly talks, hardly smiles, hardly knows us most of the time, whose palms are as soft as a baby's, papery as a ghost's. Amma who can easily fall into a well or keep walking till she reaches a village where nobody knows her or will be kind to her. She frightens easily, cannot bear loud voices and has tunes playing in her head at times that keep her from hearing anything said to her, even if it is shouted out, like Achin used to, when he was home. I wanted to run as far as I could and scream her name while our neighbors were talking about starting a search for her and even arguing about whether they should call the police. That is when Amma turned up. Rather, we suddenly found her standing at our gate, right outside, the first time in our life we were seeing her outside our little compound. Nobody, not even Amuma, understood where she had been or why, or how she had made her way outside and back now. I knew she had come back to us, to Anyati and me who loved her the most, who she may have loved the most if she knew about such things. Our faces were one half each hers, weren't they? She must have remembered us in her own way when she looked up at the sky or stood at the sandy edge of the shiny river. She came back so that we could sleep next to her every night, whether she noticed it or not, so that we could breathe into her chest and stomach, breathe the sharp and musty smell of her sari, and hear her mutter strange words that she did not use while awake, feel her hands move and her restless fingers sometimes brush against our skin. Look out for how when nobody is really looking, her eyes occasionally brighten with a little light for a tiny, tiny second. This, of course, only I have seen. Sometimes when we came back from school or sat together in the veranda, or I think I have and will never tell anyone, will never share, not even with Anyati, who has me to love her and give her only good memories, if I can. Thank you so much. So it was beautiful. <laughs> so I always imagined uh, hearing it from your <laughs> voice when I when I was reading it. So yeah, I think that uh, brings us to the end of this session, and uh, I hope we have evoked uh, enough uh, curiosity whom, in whoever has not read it. So one good thing about um, I feel novellas is like they give you a sense of uh, 
complete novel it gave you a sense of it's not it's a bit longer than short stories in short stories many people <coughs> tell us that yeah it, it, i didn't get enough time with the characters i didn't feel like i'm connecting before that the story got over but i think a novel is a very interesting form in that sense you get the entire story but still it is under 100 or less pages so you can finish i i think i finished it in one evening the one day one morning i finished in one evening <laughs> and i was actually the first reading i was very i was rushing through it yeah. to be honest i was i wanted to know what happens what happens i i kind of missed the metaphors i kind of skipped a lot of things in the first reading but yeah i think that's that's how uh, a book should be you know make, make the reader rush yeah and that's a that's a very different experience for me because i don't I didn't expect to uh, hear that from readers because I think of myself as a as a prose writer who's pretty, um, you know, of course, non-linear and all. But uh, I had this experience where uh, actually my brother, my my novel uh, when it came out, he he read it and he came and asked me, "But what's the story?" You know, so uh, so anyway, so uh, I uh, this one um, I've, I've I mean, thank you, Charlie. But I've, I've actually had. Others also tell me this. Uh, in fact, there's somebody I know who started reading the book and, and after the first few pages actually had a nightmare that night and uh, attributed it to having read the first part. So I was so happy <laughs> to hear that <laughs> because that's what you want. But to, to actually hear people say, because partly it's because it's short, but um, again, I'm going back to the fact that, you know, to me, um, this happened to these girls and, and this is something that could happen. I mean, ultimately, you know, you talked about neighborhoods and communities and all, but the fact that stories happen behind closed doors and stories are not dramatic, you know, sensational events. It's, it's the small things, it's the small terrors, it's the fear that a child goes through at night alone in a room, uh, you know, which cannot be talked about, right? And it's the it's the fear that has no name sometimes. So there's so many things happening like that and they don't get a chance to come on stage. And and for me, these girls uh, were that for me. So when somebody says they stayed with that story uh, overnight or whatever it is, um, I just feel a sense of gratitude and, and like I, feel, I really feel requited that this worked. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, I think I can understand as a writer it might be really relieving for you to, you know, it's a big, big relief actually, yeah. I know, I understand after like publication, after the first two or three weeks are pure torture <laughs> until the first few, you know. Like, yeah, <laughs> sort of, I mean, yes and no, I, I let it go, so once, in fact, once it went into print, I let it go, but when it comes back in this fashion, then it feels, uh, you know, it feels good for the the people to whom this happened. That's that's what it feels more like, that I was able to at least tell their story on their behalf and people actually sat through it, so yeah. Yeah, I think your your conviction of, uh, uh, I think the, the, your conviction in these characters, you know, the, you consider them as real. For you, they were, they are real. So I think that shines really through the uh, story because, because the as much as the writer believes that the character is real, it comes out on the page even the reader can feel you know not maybe not as much as you do but at least you know a, a part of that uh, so that makes it for a very very compelling read so i think uh, all the best and i'm i'm really thankful to you and uh, dibya from red river for inviting me uh, to host this event and i as i said in the beginning i when i read started reading reading the book i kind of felt that i'm connected to it and i'll be connected to it so has come out in a very wonderful way and thank you so much yeah. and I was very curious to know a lot of things <laughs> and uh, thank yeah. you so much and I wish you all the very best with this thank book. You, I wish I had better answers and more sort of uh, uh, you know real answers but it's, it's just how it is but like you and, and even more so I'm very glad that Red River has this whole project of I mean, picking up um, short formats, short stories. No, novella especially is a genre which um, I think has, I didn't of course set out to write a novella, but it's such a, it's actually such a powerful format. I mean, a lot of books, classics are actually novellas, you know, Old Man yeah. in the Sea and uh, even uh, Brokeback Mountain and all are novellas. So it's, I think, uh, a format which has a lot of potential 
and uh, I I am now fascinated by this format because it's short and I can finish writing it quickly. I mean, not that I'm going to write another one, but but yeah. Uh, so thanks to them, Red River and Dibya, and again Sucharita, and also a few others who sort of um, trusted this project and gave me the the confidence. I'm I'm not a very confident uh, writer, so uh, confidence that this was this had something to it, and I must stay with it. So thanks to all those lovely people. They know who they are and and the forces. <laughs> thank you and thank you all of you for coming out and you know uh, sitting through the entire session thank you so enjoy much. talking to you yeah thank you thank you so much <laughs> questions yeah, yeah.